It's 7 o'clock, and uh, I will be calling the meeting to order. Uh, older person Van der Weel uh, it may be a bit late. Uh, he is uh, currently at the doctor's office, and he uh, just called me earlier, said that he may be a few minutes late uh, pending, pending the outcome of that uh, visit. So with that, uh, I will ask uh, for the roll to be called. Boren? Here. Bird? Here. Serta? Present? Davis? Excused? Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Excused. Clayuna. Here. Manny. Excused. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Excused. Lehassel. Here. 12th President. Thank you. Um, suggestion by Alderman Boren that I think is appropriate. Uh, today we experience the fifth anniversary of uh, the September 11th an attack. And with that in mind, I would ask that we all observe a moment of silence for the victims, their families. Thank you. Now I'd ask for approval of the minutes of the previous council meeting, or the previous uh, committee of the whole meeting. We have a motion and a second. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor, ayes. Aye. Opposed? The minutes stand approved. Uh, the agenda item today, or the main agenda, will be a review of the uh, uh, budget. And for that purpose, I see that uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Gebhardt and also Mayor Perez here that I understand have prepared uh, a uh, presentation for us. So with that in mind, uh, gentlemen, we'll turn the meeting over to you. Hello, can, can everybody hear me here? Yeah, good time. Okay. Okay. Good evening, Alderman, and good evening, people in the gallery and the citizens of Sheboygan. Tonight, uh, Mr. Gephardt and I have a presentation to, to make to, to try to give you an idea of what we're up against with the 07 budget. Mr. Gephardt is going to, first of all, give you a, a budget a review, a request and analysis, I should say, and he's going to be touching on the expenditures, uh, the, the revenues, the uh, the library and the transit and also the debt service. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about those items there and give you a scenario of what's, what kind of activity is going there. I'll follow that with, uh, with, a visual, with some visual aids and run you through five charts that will give you, again, more of an idea of what's going on uh, financially in the, in the city. And then Mr. Gephardt will talk to you about the budget uh, adjustments. And what that reflects uh, will be what the departments were operating on in the year 06 and what they will have to operate on in the year 07 as per the resolution that you pass that there would be no increase in the in the uh, levy and that's a very important part of the presentation I'd ask you to pay uh, particular notice to uh, to the information that Mr. Gephardt is going to present to you following that I will again go to two more charts give you a, a little visual aid there and then the uh, the final part which Mr. Gephardt will do will be the the uh, the budget request that that have been made and the differences between what's being requested by the departments and what will be allowed as per your resolution uh, meaning that the zero increase in the levy. So they will have the same amount of money to spend as they did last year, but they requested more. What is that difference, and how is that difference being being applied? So at this time, I'll turn it to Mr. Gephardt. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Uh, on the 2007 general fund revenues, uh, the estimates are declining by a net amount of $166,000, or approximately a half percent. $3,586,000. The council has established a policy to have a tax levy for the 07 budget to remain the same as the 06 budget. Excuse me, we might have to start over again. Okay. There we go. We got 
right? Okay. Is it on now? Okay, sir. All right. I'll start at the beginning in case it was of... practice. All right. That was, that was a good practice. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, the total general fund revenue estimates for the 07 budget are declining by 166000 or approximately a half percent, to $33.5 million. And the council has established a policy to have the tax levy for the 07 budget to remain the same as the 06 budget. The general funds portion of the tax levy is $13,876,000, or 41% of the general fund revenues. State share revenues of $11.5 million, are, or 34% of the general fund revenues, are frozen by the state legislation. The status of other state revenues that totaled $3 million in 2006 will not be known until later in September. Combining the tax levy and state shared revenues, 75% of the general fund revenues are frozen. The vehicle registration fee or wheel tax, which was $210,000 in 06, will be eliminated in 07. On the 200, uh, 2007 general fund expenditures, uh, the departmental request for appropriations totaled $35,432,000 an increase of 1,679,000 or 5% above the 06 budget. The total requests are 1,846,000 or 5.5% above the 07 revenue estimates of 33,586,000. The $1.8 million is the amount of adjustments that will have to be made to the request to balance the budget, which will decrease the departmental appropriations to a half percent below the 06 appropriations due to the decrease in revenue. So we're, this evening, when we're trying to address what is the impact uh, on the budgets, basically that is the focal number on the general fund, the 1.8 million. The requests include 808,000 for capital outlay for various equipment, including squad cars. The requests have to be reduced by approximately 480,000 to match available funding. The contingency appropriations are funded at a half percent below last year with 338300 for the salary trust contingency and 25000 for the general contingency. The other requests for appropriations include wages, benefits, commodities, and contractual services and will have to be adjusted by approximately $1.4 million. The requests reflect the cost of the current employees plus the 2007 steps longevity increases the increase in the health benefit plan, and increases for energy costs. On the library and transit fund budgets, um, under the established council policy, the tax levy for the transit fund would remain at 658000 and the tax levy for the library fund would remain at 2608000 The library fund would need an additional $19,120 to obtain the maintenance of effort level of funding. And... Uh, Sharon Winkle, I believe, has addressed uh, the, this committee on what the, the impact of that is, uh, what the meaning of that is. It becomes a lot of spiraling effects uh, through that. Uh, 2007 debt service fund, the principal and interest payments are estimated to increase 168000 while the tax levy for the debt service remains at 3495000 the repayments or advances that were made to tax incremental districts will fund the debt service increase in, in 2007. Uh, we are reviewing these debt service increases. Uh, Carol Worth, RBC Dean, was in the Finance Committee tonight and was reviewing um, the uh, debt service cost projections based on the capital improvements program that's currently recommended, and we'll continue working on that. Uh, now the mayor uh, will review with you some of the charts that we have. Good morning. Questions, Chair Maria? Uh, yes. Let's, why, don't, why don't we take it? Are there any questions? Why we just review it? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Gebhardt, uh, you were mentioning that the status of other state revenues that totaled $3 million in 06 will not be known until the end of September. Uh, when that was unknown last year, did they come through at what, about what you ex had expected? And do you have a guesstimate for 2007? 
uh, those revenues that I'm referring to are expenditure restraint, uh, which is about a, a million dollars, and then the others are for, um, it's referred to as transportation aids or connecting highway aids uh, to go through the Department of Transportation, but is part of the general fund revenues. Uh, last year, I think they varied generally by tens of thousands, uh, you know, rather than a six-digit number. Okay. Uh, but uh, is anticipated that there probably will be uh, some variance. Uh, if it is positive, I guess I would suggest, and we'd have to work with the Mayor Finance Committee to make a recommendation on this, but uh, if we have a, additional funds, right now our contingency, is, as we noted earlier, uh, general contingency is at 25000 which was the original general contingency we started with uh, last year, then maybe we might want to adjust that up some. Generally, uh, we have a hundred to 150,000 in that general contingency. So we may, if we have some additional revenue from the state, that would probably be an appropriate place to put it. Thank you. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. So just to reiterate, you're, you're suggesting that maybe we shouldn't earmark that, those funds, possibly keep that in the contingency fund. And just for clarification, how much did we get last year again? From number. Mm -hmm. uh, from, from the expenditure restraints, um, the status, the unknown status at this time, the amounts. Uh, approximately three million dollars of those general, those state revenues. Is that mm -hmm. what you're? The referring? undetermined amount now that we're anticipating. How much did we get last year? Uh, it was approximately three million dollars. It was three million. Yes. Is that it? Is that it? Oh, is that it? Yes. Thank you. President Burke. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. The wheel tax uh, revenue, that's a revenue for the general fund, or is that a segregated fund? That is uh, revenue for the general fund. And is that the reflection of the half a percent uh, decrease in revenues? That is a, a portion of that, yes. Okay. What proportion would that be? Would you know approximately? Well, $166,000 is, is the net. So there are other revenues that increased, uh, interest earnings increased, and they had other increases okay. as offsets. So there's a combination of... Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just have some questions. Can you clarify under the debt service fund? Uh, you say there were payments of advances that were made to the tax and incremental districts will fund the debt service increase in 2007. Is that relating to the first bullet point you have here? Yes, to uh, offset the increase of 168000 that we anticipate there would be advances that would be able to pay back loans, basically, with right. interest uh, from those other uh, TIF funds. Thank you. Okay. these in order so you'll be able to follow follow what you've got uh, as a handout what I wanted to, to point out to the council and and the public is the 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 breakdown of where the taxes that are collected from the people go many times you hear the community say the city's charging us a lot of taxes because they get one bill and that's what they see. But I wanted you to pay particular attention and, and, and be mindful of what is, what, is that dis, what does that distribution look like when somebody gets a tax bill. When I get a tax bill, I don't just get taxed by the city. When anybody gets a tax bill, they don't just get taxed by the city. They get taxed accordingly here. And here's where the city is right here. So when somebody gets a tax bill, 33% of that actually comes to the city. So we actually deserve 33% of the criticism, not 100%. Would that make sense? I think so. Okay. So, and the state gets 1%, okay? And the county, if you will bear with me here, 22%. And I never hear them getting 22% of the criticism. I'm being facetious here, but it, I want you to understand what's going on because I hear it all the time. And if you look at the school district, of which Mr. Hanna and I were president at one time, 
38%. Percent. 38% of every tax bill that comes to you and every citizen in this community, 38% of that goes to the school district. And that's important for you to know because you're going to have your constituents tell you, why is my taxes too high? Well, you can answer that, but you can also tell them how they go from every dollar that goes, 33 cents goes to the city, the rest of the money goes somewhere else. And that's important for you to know, it's important for your constituents to know because there's this perception out there that the city is the only monstrosity politically that's charging people taxes. If you look at the 06 uh, city tax levy for the 207 budget, and this, was, this is what we're looking at. How, how are we going to distribute our levy, or the money that we collect, how are we going to distribute that? So the general fund will take 67%. This is a $33 million you're looking at right now, okay? But out of the levy that we collect, we don't, we don't just put 67% in the levy, we take a portion of that, and I think this 13% here is about 2.6 million? Our total levy is $20 million, and this is the general fund. Okay. The library, right, the library would be $2.6 million. So again, when, when somebody tells you, okay, you collect all this taxes, and this is your levy. What portion goes to the library? Well, now you can say $2,600,000. That's what's going to the library. The transit, which is 3%, and I'm having trouble here, would be $658,000 from the levy has been going traditionally, or, or this is the amount that we would apply to transit. And then service, debt service, for the money we borrow, we have to pay anyway. 17% will go to that, and then the rest will go to the general fund account of which we'll be talking about, which is how we pay for every employee, fleets, every, everything that we do. Everything that's conducted here at City Hall would be the 67% of, of our levy. And that's also very important for you to know because people think that when we collect money from the taxpayer in the levy, it's spent just here at City Hall. Well, it's not. It's, there's there's a, a very uh, good distribution of that, and people need to understand that. Now, one of the things that we'll be talking about, again, we, we're very limited in revenue. Our expenditures far exceed our revenues every single year on a reoccurring basis, and more so com compounded. And it's important to, for you to know that, and we'll be talking about what percentage we get from the state revenue uh, sharing plan that, that we, that's in place. What, what is it that we get? And I believe now it's at 47% or 46%, but we'll talk about that. But the, the importance of this chart is to explain to you that we're not getting any more. That's all we have. So we're looking at almost half of our budget, our general operating budget, half of our budget comes in, and you can almost expect the state to continue that straight line way out of the chart there because we're not going to get any more. At least we've been told that. And we don't know what's going to happen with the elections coming up. So shared revenue, which is almost half of our budget, we're not getting any more, folks. Mind you, our expenditures were going to continue to go up whether this goes up or not. So you can see this history where it came all the way up here and then it just plummeted straight across. At least, on a good note, we can thank the legislature for not keeping this thing going out of whack all the way down. At least it leveled off, it gives us enough time to plan and to, un to, to be able to uh, make some reasonable projections. And here's the one I wanted to show you with respect to that. And there's our, our, our revenue, state revenue portion, 45.8%. So almost half of our budget comes from the state right there. The other half is that levy that we were talking about, how, it, and you saw how that levy is distributed there too, which makes up the whole thing here, but this is, this is part of it here, right there. So we've got 41 and 45, 46, 47 percent of our entire general fund budget is controlled by the state because we have levy limits now also. If we want to exceed our levy limit right now, we're going to have to go to a referendum, pretty much it. The rest of the money that comes in, as you can see, and we've talked about this before, license and permits, I don't think we can uh, <clears throat> enhance those as, 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 as any more, fines and forfeitures and charges and services, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. There's not much going to come out of there, not, not a lot of uh, meat coming out of there. These, this is a big portion there, and it's important for you to understand that because 
That's why we're locked in on a certain amount in our budget, regardless of whether our, our uh, expenditures go up or not. In the final budget, then Rich will get, will talk to you um, on the, on the, uh, the difference between 06 and 07 will be the, the, uh, the fund appropriations. When you get all this money here, when you get all this money, which is about $33 million, how in the world do you people divide it up? Who gets it? Here's how they get it. If you can see public protection and safety right here, half of the, a little more than half of the pie goes to police and fire. That's how we've been distributing our general fund. 32% by itself is just police. So 32% of our whole budget goes to police, 20% to fire. Public works get 21%. Parks in the senior center get nine. The administration, which it's not just city hall, but there's a lot of a lot that's involved in there, is 17, and then that little contingency there that we talked, that Rich talked about, is a one percent there. That's how every that's how all the the, uh, the money is distributed in, in major department categories. So it's important for you to know, and I'll make this a very important point because I hear it all the time. The council doesn't fund public protection and safety well enough. Well, yes, you do. More than half of your budget goes to that. And at some point, you're going to have to do something about the other side, too, because our whole city government is a whole pie, not just one or the other or this one or that one. It's everybody. And what I try to do is hopefully work with you to do a fair and equitable um, balance of distrib the distribution of the funds here. Okay, Rich. Thank you, Mayor. On page eight, uh, this is the spreadsheet that the departments received on September 5th of uh, what they need for adjusting their budgets. The fifth column of numbers that's titled 2007 Allowed Budget, that's in bold. Uh, that's the key column there right now that you, you kind of want to focus on. The, col the columns before that are the calculation that go up to that column. <coughs> Excuse me. The first column is the 2006 original budget with capital outlay. The second column uh, shows the amount of capital outlay in 06, and the third one is without capital outlay. The fourth column is an adjustment for the decline in revenues of almost a half percent. <coughs> Excuse me. In the fifth column, then, is the net between you two. <laughs> As you can see, what, what effect the budget has on, on us all here. <laughs> Excuse me, apologize. So anyway, the uh, difference between the third column and the adjustment in the fourth column gives us the allow budget in the fifth column. Um, next to that is the 2007 budget request without capital outlay. So these were the departments are submitted here this year. And the difference between then the allowed and the request is the other column in bold that's titled adjustment to lower request to allowed. So that's the amount each department would have to adjust their budget. Um, next to that, then, is the capital outlay request. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> I should, let me go back to the previous column. The adjustment uh, to lower request to allow, as you see on the bottom, total is 1,365,000. That's, that's the total that would have to be adjusted to the uh, operational accounts. Excuse me. Then in the capital outlay request, it's a total of 808000 
uh, staying within the same budget as we had last year, we had only had 327,000 available to fund towards that 800,000. So we'd have to trim those requests by 480,000. So with that, along with the previous column of 1,365, we're looking at 1,846 that would have to be trimmed from the requests. And then the far column would be the um, net, of, well, it's the total amount, but it has the full amount of the capital in it also at this point. <clears throat> Are there any questions on that? As I said, I may read here. If I, as I said earlier, this is this is a very important uh, chart a chart that you have here, because if you look at your adjustment to lower request allowed, all those numbers in parentheses are the numbers that are going to have to be adjusted by the departments themselves, because we've asked the departments to do it, and that's the impact that's going to be felt out in the community. For example, if you look at, at uh, building inspection, they have to make a cut of $33,000. What does that mean? Well, somehow that adjustment is going to have to be made. If you hear a constituent say, why hasn't anybody responded to my call? Why hasn't anybody gone to look at this house that I've been complaining about? That may be where that adjustment may have been made. If you look further up, the police will have to make a little over half a million dollar adjustment if somebody calls you and says, well, how come my call wasn't answered, it may be that the police somehow made an adjustment that reflects that. So all those numbers in parentheses is the difference that they're going to have to make up to stay within that 0% increase in the levy that you of which you pass a resolution. Okay, Those are the numbers. And we talked about how the community will respond. Uh, in public works, they're going to call you, how come the grass hasn't been cut? How come the plants haven't been watered? It may be that those adjustments were made, and Public Works had to make those adjustments in that manner, so now they have perhaps less people out there doing that. And this is why you have to be prepared to respond to your constituents accordingly. Now, that million, $1.8 million, I believe that's what it was, that's the amount that you've asked me and Richard Gebhardt <coughs> to hold on to. So the, this is the amount they wanted above. They can't have it. They have to operate at the same level they were doing it last year. And, but this is the amount that we're being told by the departments. That's the amount we need just to keep up with everything that's been going up lately. And we can't accommodate that because they have to stay within that number of last year. Paul McGraw. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Here, hold on. i got to turn you on so people can hear you. On the on the 2007 general fund budget adjustment, the the library and the transit are not in there at all. This is just on the general fund. Okay, Do we, will we be getting a sheet on the on the, what the library came in at and what the transit came in at? Or they are separate funds, so they would have separate appropriation requests. Okay, so we will get a, a sheet on that. Tonight, yet in yes. this packet? Well, <clears throat> or, not in tonight's packet, no. Oh. Uh, they, it was part of the RO that came in was, was the total amounts that was on there. I realized it was not detail. Uh, generally, you receive the detail after the mayor's review uh, submitted, you know, the first meeting in October uh, at that level. But uh, this, of course, what we're focusing on here is the situation within the general fund which I think you know, the mayor uh, stated here that with the shared revenues frozen, with the tax levy also frozen, with the wheel tax dropping, uh, the combination is that we net out at a revenue decrease. And um, we have obviously uh, a lot of cost drivers that we'll be looking at in a couple minutes uh, that uh, are increasing costs. And uh, basically the difference between those two is what we're asking the departments to adjust their budgets within that fund. <clears throat> now this is the main operating fund, but it does total 33 million. But all the funds for the city are around 80 million. So that, yes, there are a lot of other funds, but they do have other revenue sources in, in some cases, like the utilities. 
Um, but uh, the library and transit, yes, they are dependent on the tax levy also, as well as the debt service fund. Um, so, uh, but what we're addressing here right now is basically what we, what the departments were given, uh, and departments in the general fund were given last week to present this week. Thank you. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, these numbers aren't always easily um, understood or translated into how it's going to impact our community. And you had mentioned, too, as older persons, how we need to provide an answer to the community, how services may be compromised. I, I will have a suggestion, um, because as older persons, we are first seeing this tonight for the very first time. Is there any possible way that we could have the department head heads come to us, maybe Committee of the Whole, and just provide um, some answers in terms of how this will impact their department, some of the um, things that the, the public might need to be aware of, like you said, maybe they won't be responded to as quickly. Is that possible? Yes, it is. I, as uh, Mr. Gephardt said, starting Wednesday, I will, Mr. Gephardt and I will be meeting with every department head with respect to their budget uh, request, so to speak, and then what we need to do to make those adjustments to stay within the 0% increase in the levy. At that point, they will either have, they will either have uh, made a decision as to how they're going to comply with that resolution or come back later at a future date. Once they do that, we can always call another meeting and have them tell you that, because you're correct. There, there's no specificity as far as how many, how many, uh, how many days uh, less are we going to cut their grass than we did last year. Last year we cut them 30 times out of the year. This, this time it's going to be 20. So we don't have that. And it may, may not be that easy to translate, but you'll, you will have a better idea. Thank you. All over Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to take issue with the um, comments that are being made that just because we're in a budget crunch, that means we have to decrease service to the citizens. I think it gives us the opportunity to look at the way we're doing business and identify ways where we can start doing things differently. If that means we need to take a little piece of the business and outsource it to a private firm, you know, that's something that we could look at. Because if we possibly outsource some of the things that the city does, we actually could maybe improve the service that we're currently giving to the citizens. So right away, politicians like to put on a hat that says we're going to cut services, we're going to cut services, and I disagree. I think we need to start looking at doing things differently. You know, for example, the majority of the work that Public Works does is done during the summertime. Why don't we have, you know, 300 people working in the summertime and only 75 people working in the winter or, or something? I'm just using <coughs> extreme numbers. But keeping full-time people in some of these positions year-round that's not serving the best interests of the taxpayers. And I think it gives us the opportunity to just start looking at ways of doing things differently. And I encourage department heads to do that. And also, if aldermen have suggestions, let's uh, pass them on to the mayor so maybe we can incorporate some, some new thinking. Anybody else? OK. And again, we weren't we weren't going to resolve all our problems tonight, uh, the ones that we do have, because we do have a lot of good things happen in the city also. But we wanted to give you an opportunity to see some of the activity that's going on, uh, some of the concerns that are going to be generated, and some of the challenges that you're going to face as an alderman and as a common council, because people will call you, they will write you letters, and they will give you their two cents worth, and then you need to be prepared for that. The next chart that I want to talk about is the City of Sheboygan original budgets. Uh, now keep in mind it says major departments. So when you look at major departments, we have police, public works, fire, library, and parks. I mean, this is what has been designated as, as uh, major departments before I even came here myself. But it's important to, to see the trend uh, uh, since 1996 to which gives you a, a bird's eye view, so to speak, of the 10 year activity that has occurred in every major department. For example, has money, uh, has money been appropriated a little heavier in one department than the other, or have they all been done fair and equitably, and so forth? And you can see from the activity that there's been a variance. And I, as, when I did my budget sessions uh, throughout the community, one of the things that I, that I made, wanted to make very clear is that we only have so much money to appropriate. 
when you take some money from some area and appropriate it somewhere else, it's going to create a vacuum somewhere, and it's going to, somebody somewhere is going to take a hit. And the best illustration of that that I can give you, if you look at this blue line, that blue line represents police. And you can see it increasingly going all the way up. So historically, within a 10-year period at least, the major department, the police department, has been doing rather well. It's gone up. They have not been suffering uh, uh, decreases in their budget as a major department. Whereas, I just mentioned, if that happens, usually somebody takes a hit. So if you look at the next line, which is a pink, and it's very difficult for the public to see it, but it starts here, and it goes this way, down, up, down, and then slightly curving up. That's where the activity is occurring, and that creates the, uh, the decrease there, where you hear people saying, well, we've lost so many employees in the public works. And quite frankly, they have. But there's a reason for that. And the reason is, when you appropriate money in another area, you've got to take it from somewhere else. And a lot of that has been taken out of there. Not just necessarily there, but mostly there. The next one is fire. And you can see, again, going here all the way, consistently going up. Now, you compare the police and fire, those two lines, and, and look, think back on the, on the chart that I just showed you. More than half of our budget goes to public protection and safety. So that makes sense. That shows you within a 10-year period, there's been hardly any deviation going downward. The deviation has been going upward, which means they've been getting more money than any other major department. You look at the, uh, the next would be the, the library and the parks. The parks took a little hit there, but they've been pretty consistent, which is where even where now where the library is, which is where we're at with the $19,000 difference to maintain that maintenance of effort level. That's where we're at. So that gives you Again, a, 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 a sketch of what's going on, an idea of what's going on within a 10-year period as to how money has been allocated to the major departments. <coughs> now, before I, before I go any further, you'll hear, you'll hear comments like, well, we, we're, we're missing three people. We're five people short. We're six people short. We don't have five people. We're supposed to have five more. A lot of that is happening because although they, they don't have them, that's true, but what's happening is they're still on the TO. They're still on the table of organization, they've just never been filled. So it's easy to make the argument we're six people short because they're still on the org table of organization. This is why Alderman Susha and, and the Salary and, Grievance, uh, Salary and Grievances Committee took the, uh, the effort of, uh, of doing a, a little study about where exactly people are, the departments are with respect to the, uh, to the table of organizations. For, and what I mean by that, if you have 30 people in one department, and they're still on TO, and for the last five years, there's only been 25. Well, we're five short, yeah, for the last five years, but you hadn't had them for the last five years, but you're short because you can refer back to the TO and say, we don't have them now. Then the final chart, and Rich will, will uh, close the presentation, is the uh, 07. The 07 General Fund Appropriation Request. This is, this is what's been requested as, as we stand now. This is what we have to deal with with the, uh, with the departments. These are the 07 requests, and that's what we have to, how do we make that adjustment to the 0% increase in the levy? If you look at here, more than, more than the, the wages here, and we've got the, the pension, which is 12%, and Social Security, that's allocated to that, insurance, utilities, motor vehicle, uh, other contractual services, commodities, other expenses, and a little bit in contingencies, and the capital outlay would be 2%. Usually capital out outlay, we've been talking for the several years of uh, uh, police squad cars. That's what we've been dealing with. But the wages, it's 54% in, in that area there. This is what's being requested now in 07, as opposed to staying within the 06 uh, uh, appropriation. Okay? Rich? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on page 11, it's basically the numbers that are behind this chart. Uh, the chart is a kind of a summary of, of all these numbers. So we kind of want to give you both looks on there, one to see it in, in, uh, on a chart basis and the other to give you more detailed information. And we tr tried to break this apart by <clears throat> the different types of wages, uh, regular overtime, holiday, and uh, you can see there overall the wages are increasing 2.7 percent 
And this is a combination of um, the past labor contracts and the future uh, steps and longevity payments that would be made in 07. But the, there were increases in, in the 05 and 06 uh, contracts uh, that affected what is the wages of the current employees here at this time. Then the uh, Wisconsin retirement, uh, the rates went up slightly. And uh, then with Social Security, uh, the total in increase is about uh, 3%. With the um, health benefit going up 6.5%, um, the overall insurance benefits are around 6%. And so overall, wages and benefits are increasing about 3.4% in total. And you can see it there at uh, $29 million, that's a million-dollar increase, so that's where... Um, the substantial portion of the increase is at. On contractual services, uh, broke apart the utilities of natural gas and electric and gasoline, and uh, you can see what, how energy is affecting the budget. And uh, about 21% increase for the utility group, uh, about $210,000 as an increase. And overall, um, contractual services are about 9% increase. The motor vehicle rental, that's the public works uh, vehicles that are used um, mainly in public works, but also in some of the other departments, and they're rented on a monthly or hourly basis. Uh, a large portion of that increase also is related to energy. And the commodities, uh, they're pretty well stable, um, and we got some of the other expenses on insurance and all also are, are stable. Uh, contingency, uh, I adjusted that by a half percent down to, to adjust it ahead of time. And the capital outlay, as we talked about before, uh, would have to be adjusted down. So overall, on the general fund budget, we're looking at about a 5% increase, again, the $1.6 million uh, that we would have to address. Any questions on that? Yes, thank you. This is uh, regarding the salary contingency fund. When you talk about wages and benefits, those are just step increases and the, the increases that are driven by the cost to us. Uh, that does not include money for any raises, is that correct? Uh, there is an uh, increase for wages and the related benefits equal to about the same level as we had in the 05 and 06 uh, budgets. So they're, it's around the same level. So our salary contingency fund then is about at, at 1.5%? Equating to about that, yes, okay. again. And it's, it's trimmed by a half percent mm -hmm. appropriation, but it's, uh, we're keeping it, again, stable as far as we can. Uh, we can't go farther than that, and we didn't go under that. Thank you. Any other questions? Again, if you look at the 06 approved budget, which is what you've asked that every department stay within, and the request, that pretty much reflects the ordinary reoccurring expenses as they increase every single year. And you can pretty much expect them to go up again next year. And uh, as, as Rich Gephardt said, you're looking at a 5% increase, and we can pretty much expect that again next year. The point, again, being that our expenditures far exceed, at a fast pace, the revenue that we're locked into now. And that's what creates this whole problem. Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Rich, I noticed uh, on the increases or decreases, you had three areas of substantial savings. The uh, first one was under telephone, a $7,100 savings or 8.5%. Uh, the next one was other, under uh, uh, office supplies, a substantial savings of $14,000 or 10.7%. And then also under other expenses, an $86,000 dollar savings or 15.9 percent can you just give the council an idea of how those savings were achieved i probably would have to do a little further study on those since uh they weren't uh, you know relatively large dollar amounts i didn't go any further in that mm -hmm. um there you know it can be a combination on, on telephone i know there is um in some of the departments there was a trend to use more uh, cell phones which i didn't really 
take as a separate line. Maybe I should, it is a separate line in the budget, but I didn't pick that up on here mm -hmm. uh, to break that out as a separate analysis. Um, the office supplies, I really can't speak to that. I, you know, I guess I would have to go through, see which departments are decreasing, and, and try to, to look at that. Is there any sharing of services there with the county and office supplies, or is that strictly a city savings? Uh, that's strictly with the city. There, there is some sharing with the county when it comes to printing, which is maybe a part of that. We do, do use their utilizer print shop, which helps us like with envelopes and stationery in some of those areas. But we've done that through the years, so I don't think that that's a you know a change for 07. The other one that's hefty is other expenses. That's eighty eighty six thousand dollars. Um, Fifteen point nine percent savings. And again, I, I can research that and get it to you. I did queries on our database on this, but I really you know don't have those printouts with me right now to be able to identify that. Thank you. Hold on, Montemayor. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Looking at this budget, and we're hoping, and we're, we're going to not have a tax increase on the levy for the citizens of Sheboygan. It's, we just cannot do that. Um, and I'm glad you'll be talking to the department heads, and they can certainly, they know in their departments where they can be more efficient. And that's going to have to they're going to have to let us know where they can be more efficient, and maybe by reorganization or whatever. But they certainly know which parts cannot be decreased and which parts, even though it won't be pleasant, can be decreased. Okay. It's important to note that what, what's happening here, uh, although very, very unpleasant, is not a reflection of what the council has done or not done. It's a reflection of things that are occurring, in, at least in my mind, for the most part, up, up at the top at the state level. A lot of the activity that's going on up there is being pushed down the funnel through us, and we're having to react to it. And it's also important to note that we're not unique. Lots and lots of cities throughout the state of Wisconsin, and I haven't even bothered to look beyond Wisconsin, I'm afraid to, they're having the same problems themselves. They're all having to get more efficient, more creative, and uh, redefining a lot of how government is operated on a daily basis. Because when times were good, things sort of came together to reflect good times. When times were bad, we haven't gotten together to make those adjustments to reflect the bad times that we're confronted with now. And that's your challenge. And you have to do that, and at least in my mind, the way I want to do it in this fair and equitable manner where everybody is well balanced so that not one department takes a hit bigger than the other because sooner or later, that department will dwindle, dwindle away. And, and that's very important to, to keep in mind at uh, Home Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Rich, I know we as a council said uh, we should have a 0% increase as far as taxes go. Um, but if we needed to, what would be the maximum tax increase that we could have um, with the, following the guidelines that the state has set? Isn't there a certain amount of tax increase that, that you could have? Because what I don't want to see, I don't want to see that, you know, we, we go with zero this year, and then next year we're going to be more dollars short if we'd have a, a small increase this year to curtail some larger increase in future years. Uh, we've got to look at that, too. So I'm, I'm just wondering what, what tax increase could we have um, to follow with the state guidelines? Uh, first of all, to clarify, the state has <clears throat> established a levy limit uh, for two years. It was on the 06 and the 07 budgets. Uh, there's no legislation right now in place for beyond 07. The, uh, there's a combination of factors and within that levy limit. One, um, is, well, there's a minimum of 2% uh, levy increase um, or the amount of growth that you have in your new construction. And uh, what uh, we anticipate is probably because this is based on uh, 2005 construction, we probably won't exceed that 2%. So that'll probably be our base. Beyond that, there's adjustments that relate uh, to your debt service. And it's a little bit strange because it's not really 
tied to what you really need to put on the levy. It's tied to your overall debt. <coughs> Excuse me. And last year that was a problem because of this, our, our situation that we had to be able to get our needs on the levy for the debt service. Uh, this year, since we, uh, the council issued the bonds in place of the bond anticipation notes, and the state did not recognize the bond anticipation notes as debt, even though there was like 37 million that we had out there. Um, but now they do recognize it that as bonds, they give us much more capacity. So uh, from my calculations that I've done so far, it looks like the you know, council could go as high as like 8% in total. Uh, obviously, the council would not approach that. So it's similar for 2007 as, as not having a levy limit. You know, so the council wishes to go 3 4 5%, whatever. Um, it appears that you have that authority to do that. But it is an unknown for the years beyond that, and that is a, a valid concern. Um, we, we don't know um, who's going to be, you know, governor coming up, or even if Governor Doyle's in there, whether or not, uh, you know, what will come out of the legislature. Um, and um, so it's, yeah, it is definitely an unknown it's definitely a concern, I guess, you know, from people like myself in my position is to see, see home rule deteriorating in the state of Wisconsin and the decisions are being made in Madison and not in the council chambers. But I guess that's something we have to live with. Thank you. Anybody else? President Burke? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, how much carryover money once the books were closed uh, from 2005 to 2006? In other words, once we closed the books, uh, what did we carry over from 2005 to 2006? And a secondary question, given that we are now three quarters of the way through the year in terms of our expenditures, how does that look uh, for carryover money from 2006 to 2007, assuming we spend at approximately the same rate? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. At the end of... Uh 2005, the general fund had a undesignated fund balance of uh, 5,187,000. Uh, there also was designated fund balances of um, 4 million uh, for working capital and uh, 750,000, which really was the amount that we applied to the next year's budget for the for the 06 budget, and. Um, Another reserve for uh, subsequent years' expenditures of 567000 which were more as purchase orders or contracts that we had. So in total, you're looking at $13.4 million. Uh, but again, the $4 million of that is, is designated as, as working capital, which means that, uh, again, with uh, going back to, to the state, they do not really pay us dollars in the first half of the year. It's always in the second half of the year. The majority of the money that we receive from them, uh, about... Uh, $10 million um, for the shared revenues is received in mid-November. So we need operating funds to get through the year to make payroll, to pay the payables. Uh, and generally, uh, the auditors uh, agreed and, and uh, encouraged us to put the, the designation in of $4 million because we had to recognize that we need that to, to pay the bills during the course of the year on a cash flow basis. Um, the other is... Um, that and we worked with the finance committee on this, and obviously uh, our uh, investment banker um, Carol Worth that is before the council. But uh, we also are, are trying to maintain a fund balance so that we can maintain our, our, our bond rating. Um, we're a double A rated city, uh, but if you take all the double A rated cities in Wisconsin, and you look them on a wealth basis of income of. Uh, property values per person, we're at the bottom. You know, we don't have the wealth here. The one thing that keeps us the AA rated is our financial statements. And if those drop, you know, where the bond rating would go. Um, so it's important to, to realize that and keep it intact. It, it does save the uh, citizens dollars because it is a lower interest rate by keeping that bond rating. In the, in the past, the, uh, the council, and most councils, the county have done it have done it themselves is they, they fill their hole, the budget, the budget, the hole in the budget with the reserve funds. That's pretty soon you start you start uh, getting in trouble pretty quickly with your bond rating and the operating expenses. We have next uh, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 
I guess my concern is um, where is the money for the new police station going to come from and where is the money to operate the new police station going to come from? We're barely able to operate everything fully now. Um, I guess I'm rather concerned about that without increasing our taxes. The funding for the contract to construct the uh, police station would be coming from 20-year bonds, uh, be tax-exempt uh, general obligation bonds, which means it's backed by the tax levy. Uh, we had discussions uh, this evening uh, in the Finance Committee with Carol Worth of RBC Dane of, of looking at the projections of, of the debt service. Uh, initially here, she was looking at it as, as basically what was the uh, recommendations of the Capital Improvements Commission uh, at the $8 million and all the $3.9 million for City Hall and, and the other uh, capital improvements financing needs. Um, she also will be looking at uh, what the uh, how to structure it or what the challenges would be by increasing that. Uh, the Finance Committee asked to, for that incrementally by $1 million and going up to $12.5 million. So she'll do that during this next week. Um, as far as the operating cost, I think that's really um, a major concern. I, don't, I think right now it's going to be very difficult to address not knowing what the future state legislation is going to be on tax levies. Uh, and we can assume shared revenues probably is not going to have much growth uh, in the future. Uh, but uh, the other question is what is the council's ability to raise the levy to be able to fund those operating increases? And um, so it is an unknown at this point. Thank you. Alderman uh, I've been on the Finance Committee, and, and I've been seeing these numbers for three months now, Rich, some of it. And mm -hmm. um, so it's not new to me. Uh, I think one of the concerns I have is that uh, we've expected, expressed it again tonight that the city of Sheboygan is really not growing in, by leaps and bounds, but our obligations to each other as a city are growing just because of energy increases and other factors in the economy which are beyond us. Um, it is a sobering to think, to think about the fact that so much of our services are put on the taxpayer. taxpayer. We don't have a growing manufacturing base. We don't have a growing um, commercial base uh, that can bring in big bucks for taxes. And so it's becoming more and more of a burden for just the average taxpayer. Uh, and I'm concerned about that, how we can um, somehow meet all those obligations with uh, less resources. It is a challenge, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what we're going to be discussing this week uh, in the mayor's office with each one of the departments. And uh, I think we're going to find it a challenge in each department. <clears throat> Unfortunately, a lot of that's also political. It has to be worked out politically uh, mm -hmm. a little higher up. And then it can come down to us. Uh, this is why you hear uh, phrases like unfunded mandates. Uh, and you hear about things that we are compelled to do and we're supposed to find the money at the same time. And uh, it's just, it gets very difficult. Next we have Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and I just really wanted to follow up and confirm uh, all the person claims his concerns. I mean, tonight in finance, we sat there and listened to some very legitimate needs from the Department of, of Water. I mean, we've got an infrastructure that's 50 plus years old uh, that we need to make serious capital commitments to going forward. Uh, as, I, as I said in finance, it's just, it, it's a shame that all these pressing needs seem to be coming in on us right now. We've got a police department uh, that arguably, uh, you know, has a, has a need that hasn't been met for 20 plus years. Uh, and again, we can't ignore that. And, and I agree with you, Mayor, that so much of this is political and we need to make sure that all the information's out front so the citizens understand um, that we certainly aren't mean-spirited when we go through this process. We have limited resources and we're continually making judgments. Uh, we have to, just like the department heads, have to prioritize their budgets. We have to prioritize at this level. And I'm hoping in Madison, they're doing some sort of prioritization, but we can only control what we can control. Good point. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. 
<clears throat> just to follow up a little bit on what Alderman Hanna was saying, uh, I remember a few years ago when the post office was having some financial difficulties, and where did they cut? They, if they had, uh, if the Sheboygan post office had three windows open for people to go up and buy stamps, they cut it back to one window. And of course, that's noticed right away by the public as a great hardship. I would, I would encourage uh, you and Mr. Gebhardt, when you're talking to the department heads, to try to make this as painless for the citizens as possible. In other words, let's try not to cut the woman, uh, the, the woman's hours that where the citizens are going for building permits or whatever permits. Uh, let's try to keep the, the city clerk's office as accessible as possible for people that have to go up and do work with the, with the city clerk. So let's try to make the cuts where it's going to be, have the, the least impact on the citizens in the, in, our, in the daily business that they do with the city. Thank you. The challenge is not a pleasant one, and it's not one that's, that's new to us or to anybody else, but we have, I don't want to see the day when people have to lose their jobs. I mean, people need a job, and, and they, de they depend that, that's their livelihood. I think that would be the worst thing for me to do is to even recommend anything like that. But at the other end, you have the community who's saying, we cannot afford to pay you anymore. We just cannot. So you have to strike a balance between that and the need of how many employees or what kind of a structure and organization are we going to have to still be able to maintain the delivery of our basic services to the community that they pay for, quite frankly expect and uh, deserve. So th the challenge is how do we strike that balance? On one end, they, people don't want us to charge them any money, so to speak, if I can make it that simple. On the other end, we've got services we need to, to provide and we're expected to provide, but they cost more and we're getting now. So not an easy task. Uh, you will be challenged. I will be challenged. Believe me, this is not the first time I talk about it. You, you've heard me for the last year and a half, and Richard and I talk about it just about every day. So it's not going to be easy. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, again, I just want to kind of build off of what Alderman Bourne said. You know, at the post office, if they closed a couple windows, um, one of the new developments there is they put in a machine that sold stamps. They're doing something differently. Perhaps now they are down one employee, and that's something that the city needs to, to look at. It is time to downsize, uh, maybe combine some positions, maybe not refill positions uh, when people retire. Um, but then again, maybe it's time to expand in some other areas to improve customer service to the community. And I, I challenge everyone to just start looking at how can we do things differently. You know, are there possibilities where we could put in something like a stamp dispensing machine like the post office did, and that would, you know, fulfill a, a need and perhaps eliminate a, a job? So I, I just challenge people to keep their minds open and look at everything possible because I think we can still maintain service, possibly improve service by maintaining a balanced budget. Thanks. I want to ask Alderman Verhessel to speak, but keep in mind, I think that's a good point, Alderman Susha, that to keep an open mind, an objective mind, because you're going to hear arguments where people are going to come to you and say, why are they taking this away? What do they have against this particular person or department? It's not what it's about, folks. What it's about is how do we realize cost savings to the community and make our government more efficient and more effectively. That's the bottom line. Nobody's against anybody. Nobody's after anybody. It's cost savings to the uh, taxpayer and effective and efficient government. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to reiterate what Alderman Susha and Alderman Bourne are trying to say here, and I, and I agree 100%, is that I hope the focus going into your discussions with the department heads over the next week is not so much of where we're going to cut services as it relates to the money that we're cutting from them. I think the challenge should be is how can we hold on to the services that we have and be more creative with the money that we're going to be giving here in 07. Because I mean, to assume that every dollar cut is going to mean a cut in services assumes also that we're extremely efficient as we are already. And I'd like to assume that we've got some pretty good department heads here in the city of Sheboygan and that perhaps they could get more from less here in 07. So. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I do agree with uh, Alderman Susha and, and most all the other, other aldermen here that the last thing that we want to do as a council is to eliminate positions, to eliminate jobs. Uh, I think there is some room to, uh, through attrition, through retirement in the future, 
that we can save money on wages, on benefits, uh, through attrition and through retirement, not through elimination of positions. Um, also, I think our department heads are very much competent and capable of coming up with their own solutions on how they have to meet the restrictions that are imposed upon them. I think they're much more capable than we are of knowing their departments and knowing where they can cut and where they can't cut. And I think if there is an open line of communication between the department heads and the council, uh, possibly uh, this uh, whole issue can be worked out with uh, the least amount of uh, bloodshed. Thank you. And that's why the department heads will start meeting with me on Wednesday to figure out exactly where they want to make that decision. It'll be their decision, not mine, and not Rich Gephardt's. That's a good point, Alderman Ryan. Anything else? If not, oh, okay, Alderman Radke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to echo the sentiment. I mean, we've got a lot of good employees in the city as well as department heads, and I'd encourage every city employee, if you see something someplace, at a process that we can become more efficient on to approach any one of us, the mayor, the your department head, your supervisor, whichever, because we're all in this thing together. And I mean, we're not, I'm not here to fight any one of you. I'm here to work with all of you people and the citizens as well to make sure that we get the bottom line taken care of here. But it takes every single one of us to do that. All 500 and some odd employees of the city, it needs all of us to do this. And Every voice will be heard. Just if you have an idea, bring it forward to whomever you need to so that we can work with that because, frankly, I mean, department heads can come up with this, but I still think the rank and file down at the bottom really knows where the efficiencies can be found because they're the guys who are really out in the trenches dealing with it every single day of the week, and they can bring it up into their management ranks and, and let them know to pass that up the ranks so we, we hear it here and we can you know, minimize some of the uh, impact. Thank you. Okay, I'll turn it over again to uh, any more other questions? Okay, President Burke, Vice President Serta. Your Honor. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion and several seconds. <laughs> All in favor say aye. aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs> <Good job. laughs>